Rosario Santa Marina. And I, I'm an undergraduate research assistant at LIPIA, which is a Universidad de la Plata Laboratory. And I'm in the digital television group. Uh, in this presentation, we are going to analyze uh, some uh, social TV data that is collected uh, from Twitter. And we are going to show some examples of data visualization using that. Uh, well, first, uh, today, everything is being discussed on social networks, uh, where people can share information or ideas. In this context appears uh, the social TV, which is the convergence of uh, social media and internet. Uh, it is proved that most uh, users of second screen uh, put uh, content, uh, talk about uh, the content of the TV shows uh, that they are viewing. So, uh, in, in that scenario, uh, the way of watching TV has changed. Uh, in the past, uh, the viewers uh, only just sit and and consume what the screen shows. And now exists a more interactive uh, TV feedback. Uh, so uh, in this context, uh, we show, we use uh, Twitter data to study this, this phenomenon because uh, most of the TV audience uh, use it uh, because of its simplicity. Um, uh, okay, and it um, provides use, useful uh, data to understand uh, how the audience behaves during a show. Uh, also, uh, Twitter is integrated on TV programs uh, to engage the audience uh, to participate more of the TV show. For example, uh, putting the hashtag uh, here uh, in the screen and also add uh, the Twitter conversations in the TV shows. Uh, also, it is used to make polls uh, to, to know what the people uh, think about different topics. Uh, this information uh, is useful for conventional audience measurement, like rating reported by Ibope. Uh, for example, you can analyze uh, which happens minute by minute during a show and see in which time uh, appears more activity from Twitter. And this is useful uh, for making decisions, uh, for example, uh, a marketing department can use this information to put uh, the, uh, different, uh, I don't know how to say some words, that's why, <laughs> uh, for example, which shows are appropriate for different brand targets or people. Uh, it also is useful uh, for TV makers to put different content on the TV shows because, uh, because of how people... Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, to collect this data, I'm going to explain the information workflow which consists in col first collect data, then analyze it, and the last step is make some visualizations. Uh, the first step consists in defining a criteria to, to collect that data, which can consist in different hashtags or a group of hashtags or information about different users. Um, then, um, ah, Twitter uh, provides two different APIs to uh, to do this step. 
the one is streaming and the other one is rest. Streaming is useful for example live events because uh, it keeps a connection open and every time some data is available it is pushed into the stream. Uh, REST, on the other hand, is useful for doing some particular request. For example, if you want to, to collect uh, the followers or friends of a user. Then, the next stage is organize the data processed in order to make it uh, understandable, uh, understand <laughs> and and make it meaningful. Uh, data, for example, can be sorted, labeled, or you can do different kind of things. Uh, and this process is uh, depends on what you, what you want to visualize then the, uh, after analyzing. <laughs> um, depends on the problem, or sea, or sea. What, what do you want to show? Uh, for example, if you want to count how mentions has a group of different users, uh, first you have to uh, separate the different users and initialize a counter for each. And the last phase in the workflow is uh, the data presentation. Uh, a data visualization consists in a visual is the representation of a group of data uh, in order to communicate a message and also for data analysis. Uh, a lot of things, a, a lot of charts you can use, for example, pie charts or histograms that are already known by everybody, or uh, if not, none of them are just to your needs, you can build your own visualizations. So, now I'm going to show you some different examples uh, using uh, Faro and Rosal framework. Uh, some of the different visualizations uh, are, are made using Rosal builders, another one uh, we've made our own builders. The first one is uh, called Twitch per minute histogram. It's a histogram, a histogram which for every minute we count uh, the amount of tweets. So it can use uh, uh, to, to see how the audience react to certain key moments. Uh, here is a, an example where we analyze Argentina versus Belgium, first half of the World Cup game. Uh, the important thing in this chart is that when Argentina scores a goal in this minute, uh, a lot of Twitter activity uh, occurs. Uh, here is some other example where we analyze a uh, boxing match. Uh, in this case, uh, more Twitter activity appears in the first round, but it's not related to any particular event. So, if we compare both charts, we can think that uh, this audience and the others behave in a different way, because this uh, ah, I forgot to explain something. In this case, in in round eight, Maidana beats Mayweather, and uh, nobody tweets about it. So, uh, in the first chart, when an important event occurs, people react to it, and in the second chart, no. To build this, uh, we use. Um, I don't know the name. Graph ET2, which is a Rosal builder. We only put the data into it in, and it makes this. Uh, the next example are a uh, warm up where we can see how a topic impacts uh, around the world. We use the geo target tweets, 
which has information of latitude or, or and longitude where the tweet was made. Um, first, we analyze Argentina versus Switzerland World, uh, World Cup game, and we put every tweet as a point in the map. To do this, we use uh, our team map builder. Uh, here you can see that around the world, uh, Twitter ha has a Twitter activity. So that topic influences on people. Uh, this our chart shows the same information, but in a different way. To do this, uh, we use uh, a range of colors that goes to dark blue and light blue. Uh, the difference between one and another is that, in this case, you can easily see which is the country with most activity. And the other is more to see other aspects. <laughs> No, it seems no. <laughs> eh? Now I'm going to show you a, a, a video. Mm. With, which shows uh, the evolution of time. You can see the, the, the dots. Okay. Well, the, the evolution of time of uh, the final of the World Cup. Uh, the blue ones are tweets from Argentina and the red ones uh, from Germany. Um, to do this, uh, we, we use the same builder Huh? Use another example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Uh, I I want to show that to build that we use a different image to build the, the different frames for the video. So. Another example is uh, to see how influential is a topic or a TV personality uh, to the people. To do this, uh, we use different uh, kinds of information, like the number of mentions, how many friends or followers have uh, some users, and the number of tweets, for example. Uh, here we analyze um, how many mentions have uh, each uh, player or Argentina team during Argentina versus Bosnia. <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, in this case, we can see that Messi, for obvious reasons, has a lot of mentions rather than the other teammates. Um, what else about this? Uh, to make this visualization, uh, we didn't use any builder. We build our own builder. Uh, and this, I don't know if I say it, uh, the size of the different images represents the number of mentions of each. In this case, uh, we the same information is represented by in a little different way because to do this analysis, we count all the the tweets that were made uh, during the first stage of the World Cup. This is made for each group, and we also have another visualization for the total uh, teams of the World Cup, but. I want to show this because it's beautiful. Um, the last example I have uh, is not related to uh, social TV, but it's interesting to show. 
And it also shows how popular is a user that using uh, different uh, parameters. It uses uh, the friends and followers of each user and show, uh, draws the different relationships of each. Uh, here uh, we choose uh, the friends and followers of Javier Mascherano. Because if we, in this kind of visualizations, we use all the information for each one, uh, the visualization turns complex and it cannot be readable. So we choose that. Uh, we also uh, put uh, the different size uh, because uh, uh, for each number of followers. Um, the, to do this, we also made our, our own builder, but we also have to extend some rows or places because uh, they were limit. Uh, for example, uh, at first, it only was uh, the edges are only drawn in four points here, at bottom, left and right. Uh, we have to use uh, ellipse formula uh, to put all the edges around six. Uh, well, to do this, we have, uh, we use, uh, we build a library called tweet report, which consists in three models, different models, uh, that handles the connection, then the processing, and later the visualization of the different examples. Uh, the connection uh, uses SYNC, which is a framework to handle the HTTP protocol, and which, which is we can make the different requests to REST and streaming. Then the, the, Twitter from, the data from Twitter comes in a uh, JSON format, so we have to parse it, uh, parse it into a model like is similar to a Twitter object models. Where we have to use tweets and users and other data. Then to persist it, we use a few, which is a binary uh, serializer for objects. Um, then uh, processing this data um, the data persisted uh, in order to produce meaningful information uh, the finality of this stage is create valid structures valid data structures in order that then the visualization engine can understand and put in the screen. And well, well the visualization engine uses Rosal. Uh, it ha uh, we build our own builders. Uh, it uses Rosal builders. And we have to extend some classes, as I already said. Which are the difficulties we have to do this? Uh, first, Rosal is in constant evolution. So every time the framework changes, we have to update our code. And uh, it was ugly. Uh, another thing is that many people are working on it so with different criteria. So uh, some people name a diagram to, to, some, to something that is a builder and it's difficult to understand that. And also, another difficulty is the lack of documentation. Uh, for some functionalities, no, it's not the documentation was implemented. Uh, another problem is uh, how Faro uh, man manage uh, the font. Uh, it doesn't scale uh, very well uh, the vector fonts and we cannot, uh, we cannot control them. So, uh, sometimes 
the, the visualization looks ugly. For example, here, all the zeros are aligned, but one no. And this is a problem for our project because we need that the visualization look fine. Same here, where C and R are two together. Uh, what do we want to do in the future? Um, data persistence and gender recogni recognition uh, are implemented. We want to migrate uh, from Fuel to MongoDB uh, using uh, Voyage, which is a framework for, uh, for small for Faro. Uh, the problem is well, that we have to work on how to incorporate it to our code. Then we want to do tweet sentiment analysis, uh, but it, we don't know if we can do it uh, using Faro because uh, it takes, it needs a lot, a lot of additional tools, and we don't know if uh, Faro can support it. But we have to investigate that. Then we want to build more Rosal extensions, uh, like more builders or layouts that should adjust best to our needs. Because sometimes uh, the objects that are put in the visualization that, that doesn't behave as we expect. And the last improvement we want to make is uh, live scripting. Uh, well, the visualizations uh, act, um, uh, dynamically change when the user uh, changes the script or when the data is uh, updated. Um, we think we, we can do it uh, because of uh, Faro and Rosal flexibility. So. Here are the references, and um, if you want to see more visualizations, uh, there are the link, and if you want to download the code, uh, here is the small tag hub user and the project. So. Thank you. Uh, questions? Anyone? Yeah. So what do you do with the, with the resource? I mean, you have all that data, you analyze it, and after that, what? Uh, we want to integrate it into another project uh, from the digital television group. Uh, but today we cannot do it because it's a little bit ugly. It's so this is uh, in process. We actually doesn't do n nothing with the different images. Yeah? What's the volume of things that you um, Yes. We, we have a, a slow connection of about one mega. And we, we use in streaming. We can, depending on of Twitter's activity, uh, we can uh, save about 160,000 tweets. Yes, 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 yes. It, it depends on, on on the data that we don't have some time. Okay. Yes? I didn't do that. It's uh, the work of someone else. I showed how to integrate it. So I don't know how it is done. Okay.